Karen Bernard, let's be serious. Who's your favorite bird or who do you spend the most time with? Well, Hello my fellow sniffers and flighters, my name is Marlene McCohen and this is your favorite bird Vinny the Gangsta, right Vinny? Are you gonna be quiet today? Are you gonna be like, uh, how are you gonna be? Oh, you chill, okay. Anyway, Vinny and I have a really fun video for you today. We're gonna do a q and A. I asked you guys on Instagram things that you wanted to ask me about me and the birds, so I'm gonna answer them for you. Now, a lot of these questions are bird related and then a lot of them are not. Yeah, bird related. So as I go through them, if I feel like I wanna do another video for non-bird related questions, we'll just see how it goes. So I don't know what I'm gonna be doing. I'm really just gonna pick up the phone and answer them. Vinny is really excited about this and I'm excited about this too. So for those of you wondering how to get this shout out, join my Instagram and when I ask questions, um, answer them because I've been doing this for quite a few videos now and I will shout you out. By the way, Vinny wants you to know about his Vinny Gang hoodie because it's just so cool. If you wanna become part of the Vinny Gang, the link is below to order your new shirts. I just just got in all the sizes, so order yours before they go out. Right, Vinny? And Vinny also wants to tell you about Patreon, where you could become a flighter and help me get out videos earlier. So let's get right into the video. First question. Abby21200. I know you're right here. Come here. Abby wants to know, can you tell us about your first birds? My first bird, you don't need to be jealous, was a yellow cockatiel named Dooley that my dad surprised me with after me begging him and begging him for a bird. And he told me that, all right, you know what? If you're not going to be in the video, you can't be back there screaming. Good job. And yeah, I I am staying here. Don't tell me to stay here. I am staying here. Such a brat. This story is actually on my channel somewhere, but basically what happened was I went to a friend's house and they were babysitting another cockatiel named Louie and I saw Louie and I can't say I was like, I was always into animals, but like I didn't know that birds had any personality at all. I mean, I loved birds outside. My mom said when I was little, like really young, I'd be like, look at the birds. As far as I knew, if I wanted a pet, I'd want a dog or a cat. And then they asked me, do you want to hold this bird? And I'm like, what? I could hold the bird? And just like, it just came to me. I was like, whoa, if I didn't know this, does anyone else actually know this? This is mind blowing. This is amazing. My dad said I couldn't have a bird. He was like, no, you can't. We don't have caged animals. That's not fair. And I just like made this like plea. I was like, no, you won't be a caged bird. You don't understand. You didn't see this bird. We'll hang out with him everywhere. And I guess in hindsight, it kind of became a promise to him that bird and to all the birds in the world now because now we promote engage not caged which is um my hashtag that i created so um yeah Dooley is in like every childhood photo he was went everywhere with us it was just like he was the bird of my life and obviously changed my life abby 212 300 i mean zero 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 also wants to know did i go to college and if so did i enjoy it yes i did i went to drake university it's in iowa random place to go considering i had come from out of the country i i grew up in in new jersey but i lived in israel for a while so i had gone to college from there graduated by the time i was 21 with a degree in broadcasting loved it but didn't like i knew i was in like a small town for myself but and it was just odd like I grew up on the East Coast so to go to Iowa was a little bizarre but I got a great education there and actually because I was in broadcasting and because they were really big in broadcasting and ran like the relays like I got a lot of hands-on experience I ran camera for years every summer at the horse races I was like a camera person so um, yeah I, my technical knowledge of cameras and directing I could direct a live show making radio Video commercials, all of that, it, all of that went into it. Um, so it was all about writing and all that. Kristen M X O X O. Is there any type of bird you have never owned that you want to in the future? That's such a good question. Okay, 
So to be honest, we I thought that our dream bird would be a hyacinth macaw. George does too, I think that's George's dream bird. But when I went over to Carolyn's house and I met Glory, I obviously fell in love with love and I would obviously fall in love with Glory because she's such a sweet bird, but the loudness of the voice would make it a lot to take on. Just like, because I guess I always expect to have a rescue if I had a baby of any bird. Bird. Yeah, I would love a baby hyacinth macaw. It would be a beautiful experience, but I just feel personally that birds come to me and um, I'm afraid to think of a bird because any bird I think of comes to me. So, I, and I don't need any more birds. I kind of always wanted to have a really good toucan experience, but I'm just like anti-manifesting a toucan because like I just anti-manifest all birds because if I even think of one, they just come to me. Like it's just the weirdest thing. Like even the way he came to me like I just had thought of like I wanted what why don't you come over here and tell that story I wanted a rosy that day and that day I miraculously got a call so I'm just very careful ALS Pam says did you ever think about giving up the African gray? What was the difficult, most difficult thing about rescuing the African gray? I think the most difficult thing about it was not knowing if it's going to happen. We never thought that we would give up. Usually you think maybe I'll leave this to somebody else's hands, but we had a lot of really great people there. As you guys know, it was not just us. Hope for Paws was a huge, huge, huge part in that. And they paid for every single thing that you saw that was made available in that rescue so I just felt like it was a really serious team like us being the bird lovers and them being like you know the fighters for animals in general you guys got to check out their channel giving up was not an option especially seeing the bird alive and like there and dancing no it was not an option Patricia Joel Arendt. It doesn't show me the rest of the name if it's too long. I'm so sorry. How do your birds deal with you leaving for a few days? Okay. Obviously, it's not the easiest thing for birds. You guys know that I do that time for technique. Why don't you come here? But I'm fortunate enough to be in a situation where... George's mom is amazing with the birds, both his mom and dad. In fact, Rocky likes his dad. They had lived with us for a little while, so they're very accustomed to all the birds. She loves the birds, feeds them. They probably get better meals with her than they ever would with me, although you guys know I feed my birds healthy fruits and vegetables and all of that. I'm just saying like she's one that like loves to cook and loves to feed them. As far as getting as much out time, they obviously get more out time when they're with me but I always have different people come and visit them. I try not to travel at the same time as my sister a lot because my sister does really well and she'll come and like give them out time on top of what George's mom is giving them. So but when I do come back they get excited. Vinny always laughs um, and you could just tell that they're happy that we're back. Cupcake Unicorn wants to know if my birds have any favorite songs. Ringo likes Barbara and Beach Boys. Actually, Jersey's favorite song right now is Perfect 10. She loves it. It's a song that Randy Raj used in the video for the Vinnie Gang hoodies. I put it on and she just loves it. I'm really excited to find a song that she likes because usually it was sporadic when she dances, like more like skater stuff. Vinnie loves gangsta stuff. You put on Eminem, any of that with a really fast beat. Um, he likes it and he also likes me to be involved in it. Rocky likes Disney and Mandy Moore. And Cody likes anything, like he'll snap to a beat. Classic me wants to know, why is Vinny so evil? Is it really because he's a gangsta? I'm gonna ask him. Vinny, what's up? Um, why, are, why are you so evil? He doesn't know what to say to that. You're not evil. No, no, they just wanna know if it's because you're a gangsta. Are you a gangsta? I hope your feelings aren't hurt. You're a gangsta. Oh, now you're putting on the cute. He's like, I'm not evil. I'm the sweetest bird in the world. The answer is yes, it's because he's a gangsta. Funny TikToks wants to know, any ideas why my bird smells like a warm fireplace? Yes, one, it could be that your bird is near a warm fireplace. Or two, because birds just smell any kind of fantastic and that's the kind of smell that you like. 
or your neighbor's cooking barbecue. Alana J 2004 wants to know which of my birds has the best sniff. Well, Vinny has like a really good sniff, but it's like no one can smell it except for me because I get all up close. Picasso had hands down the best sniff, so Picasso was the one. And Rocky has oh such a good smell. Like you just smell his feathers from like a foot away. Karen Bernard, let's be serious. Who's your favorite bird or who do you spend the most time with? Well, my favorite bird was Picasso. That's the truth. And I'm like so hurt about Picasso not being here that like it's hard for me to like have another bird like take that like favorite spot. I've been hanging out a lot with Vinny lately. Jersey's always out. Like Jersey, I don't think that bird is the least amount of cage time out of any bird in the entire world. She's always like out whether or not she's with me or not. The favorite bird like in the house like for some reason that gets away with everything and you guys probably see him the least but like he's just gets like I don't know like everyone just loves him and bonded with him in terms of like me George and Jenna is Cody they just love Cody Angel Coco and it's not showing me the rest how old is Vinny I have no idea Vinny could be 30 years old for all I know he's definitely over 20 you could tell by like his eyes and also because he looked like that before like when I first got him he already was obviously over like 20 years old Henry Rika is Rocky more bonded to you or George definitely George like if this bird is near George I am nothing to him I am a big interference to their love Miss Elizabeth Ma and then it cuts off I don't know why Instagram needs to fix itself what is your absolute favorite breed of bird and dog Okay, so breed for dog. Okay, dog, it's about the dog's personality. Like, Harry is one of those dogs that you know he's a human being. You know how some souls of animals are like the animal? Like, Sandy is a dog, okay? Like, she's not as self-aware as Harry. Harry is a human, communicates like a human being. But then, like, he is a little more bossy and difficult than Sandy. Not difficult in a in a in a bad way just like you know you gotta like bend to him sandy's like i just want to be outside playing all the time okay so like that's why sandy's perfect for me because with all of these personalities harry can be very overwhelming for dogs it doesn't matter it's really just about the personality i love sandy and i love harry if i was to go get a dream dog i could only really base it on like i guess cuteness you know i always wanted a Papillon and then I found out I think Sandy is kind of like half Papillon so it worked out. I don't know I guess I'm always happy with what I have as far as my favorite bird species it differs from day to day but I don't think I could live life like if I had no birds and I had to start over or something I would make sure I always had a mustache parakeet and always had an African gray I think Jersey's a very special cockatoo though she's just sweet and very special like compared to other cockatoos I've had because I've had an an two lesser sulfur crested cockatoos. One is Ty that we have. And I've had Vinny. Vinny, you wanna say hi? And I've had Vinny and Jersey. Aaron 091220000. Where does learn Vinny learn some of his phrases? Vinny, where the heck do you learn the stuff that you say? Sometimes he repeats things right away. Like someone comes in and I'll be like, this is Joe. And like, he knows the name Joe right away. Or like my friend Ginny came over and I'd be like, Ginny, tell Ginny this. And he'd be like, ah! Ginny and you're like wow like he really picks up names very fast some stuff is just nonsense and some stuff is like did he just say that I'm totally creeped out oh my god he said it again so yeah I don't know where he learned any of it except that I know that he can repeat things very fast and involve himself in it Jules Pam says are all of your birds hand fed I don't know I mean maybe at one point but right now they're all my rescues so I have no idea how that went down before I got them K Vam Surgeon says dude does George know that Vinny loves him yeah he knows especially because the other day or a few weeks ago George was away on vacation for work when he came back Vinny was so excited like Vinny just stayed on his shoulder for like an hour and yeah 
and hung out with him and laughed and beatboxed and uh, then Vinny bit him later, like literally like a few hours later. I think it was like, I'm mad that he's gone away. And when George is away, he always says, where's George? When's he coming? Why did he leave? So yeah, he knows. Chromey Homie 24 wants to know, how are you guys holding up after losing Picasso? It was really hard. And George and I both deal with grief in the same way. So it's hard to like, lean on one another because we were both like stressed and we were both angry. It would hurt to look for him sometimes because it would hurt that there was no response. And so we would both like behave very difficult, him more so like, cause I think he wasn't there to see it. So like for him, it's like, what happened? Like, why did this happen? So it's been hard, but obviously we are. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. We're dealing with it, you know? I still drive around and like, look like, is he somewhere nearby? Am I missing it? Like, what's going on, you know? Ina the Bengal says, why don't you free fly and will you take your birds out on a harness? Okay, this is really an important subject, so I'll touch on it a little bit, but I should make a video. My birds are rescues. I know I said in a video before that free flying is better with baby birds. And I still agree with that. And someone wrote a comment and said, you shouldn't like spread that rumor. And the hard thing with videos is like, I am never a hundred percent like one way about something or another. And so just because I didn't like put disclaimer and say, but you can free fly rescues, of course you can. And um, Carolyn herself does, doesn't mean that I don't think that or I'm promoting one way or the other. But a lot of the times with rescue birds, especially mine, and I'll give you my personal reasons why I don't free fly. I'd love to and see a bird fly free. I admire it 100%. But my birds are flighted and they do get exercise and they get a lot of exercise in the house, which is also valuable. First reason for me personally is that there are a lot of hawks here in California and I have a lot of small birds. I have Rocky that could maybe be a free flighted bird, but when your birds are older, you don't know, like, Rocky didn't come to us till he was 24 years old. You don't know if the bird has the right muscle build, if the bird's been building muscles, if it's gonna drain them a lot to fly. It takes a lot of training to free fly. These people are so amazing at what they do. So it's not something that I can just come in and go, I'm the expert now on free flying. And since I'm not an expert on free flying, I'm not gonna put my birds in that situation. I would take them and get them the proper training and spend as much time as, as it takes before to get them to that point. And a lot of professional free flyers don't have a bunch of rescues that they're not currently free flying to worry about all day. And I don't know every free flyer schedule, but I know all the dedication and work that it takes to focus on training a bird to free fly. I don't think I have that with all the rescues that I do have. So I have to give them a lot of attention and focus as it is throughout the day for them to be engaged and not caged. And also when you free fly a bird, it has to be a bird that you are bonded to, that you guys have a certain amount of trust. And um, I don't have that with Rocky in terms of being able to free fly him. George would, but then we're back to the situation of he's an older bird. You don't know what condition his muscles are in. Birds get arthritis, osteoporosis. There's a lot of things that you just don't know when you have a bird that age, their instincts are not the same. They may not enjoy flying in the same way that other birds do. And I know that sounds like a weird comment, but um, it's, it's not. <laughs> and I should go into this in more detail in a video, but yes, do I love free flight? I love it. I respect it so much. I think the birds are so, so happy. I just don't think any of the birds that I have this point in my life are great candidates for it is what I should say. Cashy Red Panda, how long have you had your birds and are you planning on getting any more pets? I never plan on getting pets, just like things happen and they come to me at this point. And then it's been a little bit exasperated because I have the channel and people are aware of what I do with birds. So now birds come to me and then I get myself put in a certain situation where I feel like I have to help. And obviously I want to help, but at the same time, I don't ever wanna be a person that goes out and gets pets to 
I don't know what because I could imagine that it, it it could look like that but for me I'm with my birds all day long um, and they are a lot of work but I do have really great skills at maintaining them all right now as it is I don't know when this video is coming out there is something that is gonna happen and if it has happened by the time this video comes out then you know what it is and if it hasn't happened then uh, I know that's so mysterious, but it's something you guys have wanted to know about. Miss Elizabeth Ma, how long have you and George been together? Probably like 10 years. What is the longest you've had a bird? I guess Dooley. Dooley was our first bird. We had him up until he was about 15 years old. That's when he died. <laughs> Amant wants to know, how did you train your birds so well? My birds get trained so well because I include them in everything. So I have birds that are great at going to people and like letting you hold them. Pretty much you could hold all of my birds except for Rocky in terms of outside socialization. But in terms of um, them being trained and bonded to me and like everyone else in the family, it's really just about everyone including them and a lot of positive reinforcement so in case there's any behaviors they're exhibiting that I don't want, then I really just think positive enforcement is so important for birds because they don't care about you yelling at them and stuff like that. 11%, how do you find time to take care of this many birds? I know, and do YouTube and do merchandising. How do you take time to take care of this many birds? I know, and run a channel and keep a house clean. Well, I don't know, I feel like they're part of the family. I just include them in everything. I have some obsessive compulsive issues, so I think that actually helps because like I can just do things really Really fast like I find ways I'm like my own conveyor belt with cleaning and keeping things nice because I have to run this channel at the same time something I didn't expect I would be doing you know and a lot of things I do for the channel like merchandising and making the videos and editing them it's all um it's all a lot but the birds come first and they are my family and I make a point of eating with them and if I have to do something and I've been away all day that's why it's good that you know there's also George and other people that are familiar with my birds but if I absolutely do have to be away all day and I feel like they didn't get time then I don't go out later again like I make sure like you know George could be like do you want to go to the movies I'll be like no let's let's just watch a movie with the birds so that they're all out for a good five hours doing whatever they're doing watching snacking hanging you know like then and I go shower with them all, you know, like I really make sure that they are included at different parts of the day. I also have this um, outdoor aviary to give them some sun when the weather is nice so sometimes I can come in and like get things done while they're playing out there with their toys and getting sun and then you know I bring them all in and then we all eat dinner together. Before they go outside they all eat lunch with me so so it is a lot of work but it's totally worth it I went somewhere once on vacation actually to Washington and I got very panicked and depressed because and paranoid and then I realized it's because there was so nothing to do not in Washington just like where I was like we all chilled out by like 6 p.m. and me always having something to do keeps my mind off being um, any kind of compulsive so the birds like help me with that I guess like first I was like dang like people ask me all the time you're so OCD the birds throw seeds they throw this how do you handle it is like isn't it like anti you and it's just like no I realize they help with any kind of compulsive thoughts because I have no time to do anything except think about them if it's too quiet my mind gets paranoid so um I guess there's that and um I just try to make it all work just try to do my best the channel has been a lot of work you guys might not imagine how much work goes into a YouTube channel. I do everything myself, like shipping your shirts, everything. If you guys want some Vinnie Gang hoodies, I like, I'm in charge of everything. I recently 
have had my friend Chris edit these videos. That's been enabling me to get them out earlier for you guys on time, not miss any days. If you guys are enjoying this and want to support that, you could check out my Patreon and become a flighter, get early access and get exclusive content and stuff that I send out. So um, yeah, that is it. I love you guys so much. There's a lot more questions. If you guys want a part two to this video, there's so many cool things I wanted to answer, but I just didn't feel like I had time about the birds, about me and George, about how I earn money. People are asking me um, how I met him. I'd love to answer all of that, but I feel like this has been a long video, so I want to give you guys a chance to have a part two. Yay! Let me know if you guys want that. I love you so much. Bye!